Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Today we have Dr. Dennis Spencer, Harvey Cushing Professor and Chairman of Neurosurgery at Yale, Yale University Department of Neurosurgery. He's been a special person in my career. I have done a fellowship training under him, and he's been an amazing mentor. I'm very appreciative that he's here today with us talking about evaluation of temporal lobe epilepsy. We are also going to discuss controversial issues related to topic. This will be part one. In the second part, we're going to review technical nuances for anterior temporal lobe resection and selective amygdala hippocampectomy. Dr. Spencer, thank you, and please go ahead. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, I appreciate you asking me to, to do this, and we'll be happy to go through <clears throat> our evolution and how we understand temporal lobe epilepsy and, and uh, our evaluation during this first, uh, first section. Um, as you know, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of trying to morphologically classify the, the epilepsies, and that has evolved, as we'll see a little bit later, into a classification that involves the networks aside from <clears throat> the substrates. Using the substrate classification, what we mean by that is the seizure type plus the pathological and anatomical localization. It really helps us, I think, understand how we should approach the patient and how they're going to fall into categories that are going to be more or less responsive to uh, surgical treatment. So for temporal lobe <clears throat> epilepsy, Obviously, mesial temporal sclerosis, uh, neuronal loss in the hippocampus, uh, and gliosis is one major category. We also see a number of patients that uh, emerge, maybe less with chronic epilepsy now, uh, because of MRI, early MRI in patients who have their first uh, seizure. We've seen patients uh, with tumor and chronic epilepsy drop off just because of uh, imaging. So the oncological surgeons are seeing these patients uh, rather than the epilepsy uh, surgeons. And it means, in fact, that uh, we've done a good job in preventing the continuation of temporal lobe epilepsy with the identification and resection of uh, the benign gliomas. Uh, vascular lesions, primarily uh, cavernomas, are the next category uh, in substrates, and they also respond to uh, do directed uh, surgery. Uh, of course, with the caveat is that you must resect that hemocytorin astrocytically involved uh, region around the cavernoma. And then an increasingly more important uh, group uh, are the patients with developmental abnormalities of, of the variety of cortical dysplasias and heterotopias that, uh, that we see and the, and the genetic changes uh, that we see in temporal lobe epilepsy. So let's move from that after looking at the substrates to uh, the medial temporal lobe epilepsies. We, we noted that sclerosis is the most common pathological uh, substrate. There are also the lesionals, which are, would be tumor, developmental, or vascular, <clears throat> and they often lead to or may lead to what we've coined paradoxical uh, <clears throat> medial temporal lobe epilepsy. And by that we mean if we wind up recording uh, from uh, invasive monitoring, recording from electrodes in the hippocampus. We may record the seizures actually beginning in the hippocampus, <clears throat> but in the setting of uh, other, other pathologies or in the setting of a normal volumetric uh, hippocampus. And we may see this in tumors or in its dual pathology, most commonly in the developmental or cortical dysplasia patients. So we know that, <clears throat> that uh, there's a long history of the description, the early description of neuronal loss and gliosis. I'm emphasizing the, the gliosis and, of course, Jackson, who uh, actually took this pathology from Charcot, is not his uh, original uh, description of uh, medial pathology and associated that with the limbic, uh, uh, the limbic, limbic seizures at that time. Uh, lateral cortical onset was emphasized by Penfield with recordings by Jasper early on of the uh, interrectal spikes in the temporal lobe and used those to uh, define and describe uh, their resections, which were primarily initially lateral temporal resections. Um, Murray Falconer in the 